here's when he said to me, what we're going to do is we're going to build a port and then the tenements are here and then we're going to build a railway line and we're going to link them up. We're going to sell the iron ore. And I went, all right. And, and how much is that going to cost? And he said, oh, about $2 billion. And I just went, oh, my God. I laid out a map of the Pilbara and I drew on it in a text of where the railway line was going to go and where the port was going to go and where I thought we could find ore bodies. And he said, how much do you think this is going to cost? And I said, between two and three billion. And our market value was about eight, six million dollars, five million. And he just shook his head and he said, does Nicola know anything about this? I said, yeah, she thinks I'm nuts, but we're going to have a crack. Scary, exciting, um, uh, dangerous, thrilling, uh, anything you care to mention. You did want to achieve things for yourself. You did want to, individual people wanted to create things because everyone around them was, there were all these successes going on. As soon as I walked inside the office, I can remember this feeling of excitement and energy and I've never felt that. Uh, there isn't another example anywhere in the world of a resources company starting from absolutely nothing, you know, one person with an idea, no money, no iron ore uh, in 2003 really, um, building something so quickly as a team of people and so it is something that Australia should be very proud of. We asked Dave Lou to go off and get prepaid contracts for an ore body that we couldn't, hadn't proved up yet. And that's uh, you know, 20 million US dollars or whatever, but it was something like that. Uh, well, what, what are we signing up for? Well, we haven't actually got that yet, but can you prepay? And he did it, you know, a magnificent effort. That's why I'm saying we changed the rules of business. I and mean, Andrew drove that process. He would sort of, just by virtue of his, uh, his ruthlessness on costs, um, his positiveness on innovation and new ways of doing things. Um, the culture that developed even in the very early days was, uh, was very, very different to a bureaucratic, highly systematised approach. We want you to take risks. We'll support you in taking risks. We expect you to make mistakes. Get on with it. It was great. Rio and BHP were on the other side of the door saying to media, it will never work, and this guy's a young upstart. You know what he's done at Anaconda. It'll never happen. And if anyone invests in it, they'll lose their money. Um, I actually went and saw um, the chairman of uh, BHP very early in my directorship. And uh, I said to him that uh, we could both save a lot of money by sharing facilities and working together. And he said, quite frankly, I've never heard of your company, but leave it with me, I'll talk to, you, to the staff about it, and um, I will, uh, I'll give you a ring in a couple of weeks. Heard, well, that's 10 years ago, and I still haven't heard from him. If they'd embraced us a little more, we wouldn't be what we are now. We'd be a little 20 million ton per annum producer begging for space on their, on their infrastructure. But, um, but by choosing to uh, block us, they forced us to become their nemesis. So we looked at the Citigroup guys, they looked at us, and within minutes we were watching the bonds uh, uh, be posted and, and ramping up towards $2 billion. And within a couple of minutes, we were ringing the bell uh, because we were over the top. We were just over $2 billion. It would have been about three in the morning, the text came through to say, we've done it, you know, we've closed it. Just, uh, and I mean, it was close. We just sort of rolled over that line, only just. Um, and there was a real sense of euphoria and you could get it across the line from the people in New York. You know, I literally could feel my heart inside my body jumping up and down at that moment. Port Hedland Airport became an emergency landing zone for the injured. The mine workers who survived a nightmare, a Category 4 storm packing winds of up to 275 kilometres per hour. They knew the cyclone was coming, but never expected this. 
look, everyone was really upset, uh, obviously. I mean, lives were lost and the family was, you know, broken, really, because it was a family, so it wasn't just the families that were affected, but certainly um, everybody felt it. You know, I remember one guy who was at a very grave risk of never walking again, and he reached up from his bed and he could see tears flooding down my face. And he said, what are you going to do, Andrew? And I said, look, I just, I just feel, you know, as close as I've ever felt to giving up. And um, he said, you must never give up. But if you give up, all our injuries mean nothing. But that was a very, very tough, poignant and, and evolving moment. And, um, and it gave me enormous certainty. The moment when the first product came out of the process plant and off the, the stack or at cloud break and fell onto the ground. Um, I was standing, you know, about 50 or 60 metres away from the stack. It was just absolute relief. It was just, it was just magnificent. Two days that I will take to my grave with me uh, was uh, first all on train. It's iconic, it's a bit early to call it iconic, but it's definitely a postcard photo of Andrew Forrest on the front of the train, waving the Australian flag, this joyous spirit in his face. They're seminal moments. And, and, and that was a, such a proud moment, it was fantastic. When the first ship came in to port and we were there with all our family, the five of us were on the front of that ship as it came into the port, our son got to pull the horn on the ship. And then all these horns just went off in Port Hedland. And it was the most incredible experience because it was just like everyone was cheering for this first ship of Fortescue's. And we were all there with just tears running out. So more tears of joy, I think, than tears of frustration Andrew's had. You know, that, that elation was incredible. Go Australia! Standing there while the oar comes off the end of it and realising that Thank you, boys. it was only five years before that or that we had actually decided that there'd be a Fortescue Metals Group. At the back end of this, you stand back far enough and take a deep breath and say the company built this for two billion odd dollars. It's, it's a magnificent feat. So there were issues that, that can always be done better. But the final result was amazing. And I think that's the biggest strength Fortescue has is to keep the target out there and to keep going forward towards it because the satisfaction in achieving it is one of the best feelings in the world. Because I have the, 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 the benefit of coming in behind um, some of the people and what, what they've created, I'd like to think what they've created is great, but I actually think part of the fun of the story of Fortescue is what's to come because when you start to build and generate the cash flow that we're going to build the opportunities that it opens up for individuals within the company for the company itself um, the funds just started. One other value that I'd like to mention specifically and that is never ever give up. The early um, images of this were around that pelican with the frog in its mouth and the frog uh, grabbing the pelican's neck um, so it couldn't swallow the frog and I think that epitomises the way we do things at, at Fortescue. We'll find another way and we'll never ever give up on, on achieving that.